this nigga killed his wife and then kidnapped the child. What is going on in this man's head? Yeah. What's good y'all welcome back or welcome if you are new thank you for checking out the video i hope y'all enjoyed yesterday's uh video that shit was extremely fun to record and just my whole reaction to it is just great so if y'all haven't checked it out go check it out it was the uh heart attack prank on my nephew really shocking really shocking so just go check it out but today we are reacting to fact faction i've never reacted to this channel before so they're new to me but it seemed interesting five mysterious unsolved cases number eight so that means they have a few i hope it's as creepy as the stuff we've been watching these past couple weeks but original video link will be down in the description let's get into the video make sure everything recording good okay yeah we good volume up all right five mysterious unsolved cases number eight Oh, they just hopped straight into it. Okay. Rella Sherrod was just eight years old when she was last seen in March 2014. For more than a year before her disappearance, Rella Sha, her mother, and her three younger brothers had been living in a homeless shelter in Washington, D.C., alongside hundreds of other families. Okay. 51 year old Khalil Tatum worked at the shelter as a janitor. He had former felony convictions for breaking and entering, burglary, and larceny. Tatum had grown close to Relisha and her family over the course of their stay. <laughs> Despite a policy that prohibited fraternization between the shelter staff and its residents, Relisha and Tatum spent time alone together, and Tatum gave her gifts, including a tablet. Relisha even referred to him as her god daddy. Tatum okay. spent time with other young girls staying at the shelter as well, but was never disciplined for this behavior. Toward the end of February 2014, Yo, Relisha's mother... Sh they are being extremely detailed. They must have like really did like a lot of research on these stories. And it's a really long video, so this, this is going to be interesting. Amika Young placed her into Tatum's care, allowing her daughter to leave the shelter and stay with him. Young was reportedly unhappy with the conditions at the shelter and may have been trying to give Relisha a better life. But once Tatum took over caring for the eight-year-old, she began to miss school at an alarming rate. When school officials spoke to Young about the absences, she told them Relisha was being cared for by the man she called Dr. Tatum. When they called Tatum, he said he was treating Relisha for neurological issues. By March 19th, Relisha had been absent from school over 30 times. When child services arranged to meet with Tatum, he never showed. It was at this time social workers learned that Tatum wasn't a doctor at all and contacted oh, wow. the police. Young told investigators that Tatum and her daughter were attending a medical conference in Atlanta and that she'd spoken to Relisha on the phone on March 17th. Young was convinced her daughter was safe and declined to file a police report, even though Tatum could not be reached on his cell phone and the DC apartment he had shared with his wife was empty. A missing persons investigation was launched. Security footage of Tatum and Relisha was discovered at the Holiday Inn Express in Northeast DC. The two could be seen walking down a hallway at the hotel on February 26th. Both Tatum and Relisha look at ease in this footage, they're each carrying a shopping bag and walking at a leisurely pace, and nothing seems out of the ordinary. Yeah, a it doesn't seem like would she's likely like, assume like they were father doesn't want to be around him. Like everything's Footage been fine. From March first, but like, the how do you just go with a stranger? I mean, I guess he's not sure he's a doctor, but like, at the day's nah. End. This video is the last confirmed sighting of Relisha. When Tatum's wife, Andrea, was found shot to death in a Maryland hotel room, investigators ramped up their search for both he and Relish. This nigga killed his wife and then kidnapped the child. What is going on in this man's head? They learned that at the beginning of March, he had purchased large trash bags, a shovel, and quick line. Oh, he was planning. On March 31st, Tatum's body was discovered at Kenilworth Park and Aquatic Gardens. He had shot himself with the same gun that killed Andrea. 
there was no trace of Relisha. Child Services was criticized for Are waiting so serious? long to take action regarding Relisha's absences from school. The agency had been involved with her family before, finding that the home environment Young created was unsafe and that she had medically neglected at least one of her children. But it wasn't until Relisha vanished that Young lost custody of her kids. She was also investigated for obstruction of justice due to the statements she had made about where Relisha was, but was never charged. She rarely speaks to the media about Relisha's disappearance. In a statement to the Washington Post in 2014, Young said, It's not my fault. I'm tired of laying my head down to get some rest, and I can't even reach out and grab my daughter. Relisha has never been seen or heard from again. Authorities believe she was likely killed by Tatum. His mm -hmm. purchases in early March indicate he may have planned to get rid of human remains. In 2020, police searched a series of tunnels underneath the shelter, which Tatum would have had knowledge of as the janitor there. Nothing was found, and the young girl's fate is still unknown. Rella Sherrod would now be 15 years old. That is crazy, bro. <clears throat> Belgian backpacker Theo Aes began his solo travels in Australia in late 2018. Nearly a year later, he disappeared a week before his flight back to Belgium. 18-year-old Theo arrived in Byron Bay, a popular tourist destination, on May 29, 2019. He checked into a single room at the Wake Up Hostel in Belongil. It was the final leg of his trip. He planned to spend a few days in Byron Bay before taking a bus to Sydney and flying home. On the evening of May 31, 2019, CCTV captured Theo and a new friend he'd met at the hostel buying some alcohol at a local liquor store. The footage indicates nothing out of the ordinary in Theo's behavior. The pair went back to the hostel, and later in the evening, Theo visited a bar called Cheeky Monkeys, located about a 20-minute walk from the hostel. Around 11 p.m., he left. It's hold unclear. Up. They said that's a 20-minute walk? Wait, hold up. Let me just located about a 20 minute walk from the hostel around that shit is not a 20 minute walk hey look maybe it just looked far in my head bro but that look maybe like a 20 minute drive i don't know where the fuck they got walked from but hey maybe it's closer than what it what it appears right here around 11 p.m he left it's unclear whether he was overly intoxicated but witnesses have stated he was not drunk that night. CCTV footage of Theo leaving the bar provides the last known images of him before his disappearance. Ah, <sighs> shit like this is just insane to me, bro. Cause it's like, what happened to As these people? As he walked away from the bar, Theo used his phone to send people several really messages can just to disappear. friends, watch a YouTube video and use Google Maps presumably to navigate his way back to the hostel, but he never made it there. Cell phone records indicate that Theo actually walked in the opposite direction. He kept up a quick pace, following an unusual route down dark streets and through bushland to Tallow Beach. Okay. Throughout the journey, Theo <laughs> was sending and receiving messages. After sending a WhatsApp message to his stepsister shortly before 1 a.m., his phone stopped emitting a signal. My mans did not walk all of that. Ain't no way. Theo's family called New South Wales police, reporting they hadn't heard from him. The same day, the hostel where Theo was staying contacted the police as well. His checkout date had been three days earlier, but he was nowhere to be found, and his belongings were still in his room. Theo's parents, Laurent Tellez and Vinciane Del Forge, flew to Australia to search for their missing son. Helicopters, divers, rock climbers, dogs, and drones were all used in the extensive hunt for Theo, but to no avail. A month later, a baseball cap was found by searchers at Tallow Beach. It resembled the one Theo was wearing when he was last seen, 
and his family believe it's his. The official search was called off shortly after this discovery. The final signal that could be traced from his cell phone placed Theo in the area of Cape Byron on June 1st. Authorities theorize that he may have fallen from the cliffs near the lighthouse on oh, Byron wow. Bay, but there's no explanation as to why he traveled away from his hostel to this remote area in the middle of the night. In 2019, the backpacker Theo was seen buying alcohol with, Antoine von Latem, told the Daily Telegraph about the night Theo disappeared. He described their trip to the bar. We went out together after leaving the hostel, and we arrived with some other people from the hostel, and then everyone talked with other people. An hour later, he was kicked out of Cheeky Monkeys. It's not clear why Theo was asked to leave the bar. Some theories suggest he was overly intoxicated, perhaps as the result of a spiked drink, and simply got lost that night. Others wonder if he had an altercation of some kind inside Cheeky Monkeys, which did have a bit of a rough reputation. Theo's whereabouts remain completely unknown, but his family maintains hope that he is alive. They even wonder if he could be being held against his will. His father, Laurent, told media outlets, as long as we have not found his body, we keep hope. And sometimes that's all you can do. It's crazy though, because for this story, it's just like the only last thing they had was him leaving the bar and that's the only cam footage they had and then the rest of it was just like you know cell phone tower length and just like trying to figure out like where the phone was positioned no footage so anything from the bar to wherever he ended up that night like anything could have happened so we just have no clue like he just went missing on the evening of november 3rd 2018 40-year-old mother of five, Tamla Horsford, attended an adult slumber party with other local mothers in Cumming, Georgia. I think I heard about this one. I think I heard about this one. Hold on. Let me, let, let's keep going. The following morning, Tamla if it is, dead, I'm going to be upset. Nobody would be able to explain why. Yep, I think on this the is the one. On the morning of November 4th, Tamla's body was discovered in the backyard of Jeannie Myers' home. Myers had invited a group of mothers who met through the Youth Football League over to celebrate her birthday, offering to let them spend the night to avoid drinking yep, this and is the picture. Though the party was planned for a group of nine women, two men also stayed at the house that night. Myers' boyfriend, Jose Barrera, and Tom Smith, the husband of another attendee. Barrera and Smith hung out in the finished basement while the women socialized upstairs. Tamla drank tequila and went out to the back porch balcony to smoke throughout the night, mostly cigarettes, but also marijuana until Myers asked her to stop. And I never even heard At the full story point, behind this either. The men came back upstairs and the group played cards against humanity. Around 11.30 p.m., some guests began to head home, while those who planned to stay the night got ready for bed. The last person to see Tamla alive was Bridget Fuller, who left the house at 1.47 a.m. when her husband picked her up. She told police that she and Tamla were the only two people left downstairs and that Tamla was eating gumbo soup and planned to smoke another cigarette before going to bed. Okay. The home's security system registered the back door opening, closing, and opening for a final time at 1.57 a.m. At 8.45 a.m., Tamla was seen on the lawn 14 feet below the porch, face down and unresponsive by Myers' aunt, who lived at the house. Jeannie Myers and Jose Barrera called 911 at 8.59 a.m. The homeowner, Myers, could be heard guessing that Tamla fell off the balcony, which had a nearly four-foot-tall mm. railing. Barrera told the 911 operator that Tamla wasn't breathing, and described a small cut on her wrist, suggesting she may have tried to hurt herself. Okay, what's going on? Um, we had people over last night when we were drinking. Most of us went to bed. One of them stayed on the balcony. She was drinking, and we just went out outside. See, why are you even explaining all that? Tell her. It looks like, may I'm guessing, maybe she fell off the balcony. But she's stiff. 
Okay, is she breathing? I, I don't know. I don't know if she's face down. She's a little too calm for Okay. Me. How old is she? At 41. Here, hold on. Hey, this is Jose Barrera. Hey, have y'all checked to see if she's breathing? She's not moving one bit. She's not breathing. Um, okay. I just tried to assess her Tesla. She's completely face down in the yard. Um, she is stiff. Okay. Do you see any blood or anything to where that from where she fell? Um, I, I don't know if I should move her over. I mean, she's completely face down. Okay. I mean, can you just check and see if she's breathing? If, if she's not breathing and you and you know she's gone, then just leave her where she's at. If yeah. She, okay. One minute. You know, like my girlfriend said, people were over last night. <clears throat> um, just we were had she was her birthday party. We we're not the woman that we believe to be deceased, but it's my girlfriend's birthday party. Instead of having everybody go out, she had everyone stay in. And she was the last one I saw before everybody, I mean, everybody was typically put off to bed. She was the last one in the kitchen. She was just think, either waiting around for a ride or waiting until the morning. Okay. Was she there with anyone else? Um, I don't believe anybody was. Uh, my girlfriend has cameras here on the back deck that we can check. Okay. That I think would have caught the incident if she fell from here. Again, okay. I, I, <laughs> so that's good. I don't know. How, it's, it's hard to say if she fell from from the deck or if she was already downstairs. Where's that she footage at? Only, I want to know what that footage looks like. And, I'm sorry. That's a lot of information. Barrera mentioned on the call that the house had security cameras and were pointed at the backyard, yeah. but they were later found to have dead batteries. Ain't no way. Ain't no way out of all the times. Dead batteries. I don't believe it. Sheriff's office reported multiple blunt force injuries in Tamla's autopsy. Noting a high blood alcohol level in her system, investigators agreed she had probably accidentally fallen off the balcony to her death. The other partygoers reported going to bed before Tamla. Tamla's friends and family were suspicious of the story. Hell yeah! Whatever had happened to her, it seemed she had been alone. The family asked for an independent autopsy from the Georgia Bureau of Investigations. This autopsy found that Tamla had suffered more severe injuries than might be expected from an accidental fall. In addition to blunt force trauma to her head, neck, and torso, she also had cuts on her face hand and legs, and a laceration to her heart's right ventricle. Her right wrist was dislocated, her neck was broken, and there were four types of hemorrhages in her skull and brain. A Bro. blood alcohol level of 0.238 was found in the GBI's toxicology report, in addition to traces of an anxiety drug and THC. Two oh. months after Tamla's death, Barrera, the man who reported it to 911, was fired from his job as a Forsyth County court officer. For unknown reasons, he had tried multiple times to illegally access the official incident report. Despite the unusual circumstances, That's Tamla's more death than extremely was unusual. An accident, and the case was closed Sounds guilty on to February me. 20th, 2019. The Horsford family hired attorney Ralph Fernandez to continue looking into Tamla's death. Good. On June 5th, 2020, Fernandez informed Tamla's husband, Leander, that his team's findings suggested the incident had not been an accident, but a homicide. Tamla's injuries indicated she could have been involved in a struggle and the investigation had left much to be desired. But like, how is the there no had evidence? Been poorly preserved. Autopsy photos were never released to Fernandez and were possibly not taken at all, and witness statements that conflicted with one another had not been followed up on. A week later, Forsyth County Sheriff Ron Freeman asked the GBI to reopen the case. The agency agreed but did not provide a timeline for their investigation. 
Over two years later, it is still unclear whether Tamla Horsford died as a result of a terrible accident or something more sinister. Yo, this case, is that everything? That last case was insane. I, I am so positive that he and the wife, the person, you know, the chick for, with the birthday or whatever, had something to do with what happened to that woman. Because there is no way. How is there nine? Okay, look, I'm, and I'm sorry to say this. Nine white women, one black woman, and the black woman ends up dead. There's no cam footage because it's dead, no batteries. And then the husband is trying to, to change the fucking uh, records so he has to leave his job. Like, all that sounds guilty, bro. I'm pretty sure they did something. Y'all can let me know down in the comments. We're going to cut the video short. Y'all ain't getting the whole video today. But I hope y'all enjoyed the reaction. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. I love y'all. Peace. I may finesse the bitch if I'm able uh, Run up, you catch a clip, get disabled uh, I never kill my brother, I ain't able to can't.